Hello everyone, Akram here, and we're doing a Vintage Masters Draft again. Um, ideally, this is my last draft on my old computer, because I learned that it might be arriving early, with a, i.e. tomorrow. Yay. Um, anyways, onto the pack. What do we got going on here? Rare is Flowstone Sculpture. That's awful. Aether Mutation is a very good card. Goblin Settler's fine. High Tide. Love High Tide. I know. Storm is bad. Well, Storm is hard to draft. But if you can get the right Storm deck, it basically almost auto wins. From this pack, though, aside from taking the High Tide, the only real pick here is probably the Aether Mutation. I guess you could pick the Flowstone Sculpture, but I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it. It's it's only alright. It's not the greatest. So we're going to take the High Tide. Ooh! Fl Factor Fiction! Factor Fiction is very nice. Um, I think it definitely is the right pick if we're going to try for a Storm deck. Um, what else is in this pack that's worth noting? Counterspell, Scrivener, Banal Trapper's fine for a white deck. Lurking Evil can be played in the Suicide Black. Gamble's not really all that great. I'm trying to think, what did our person before us take? They took a common. Because we have rare, uncommon, 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 and the foil would be a piece of power if they took a piece of power, so... We'll take the Factor Fiction. And we get a deep analysis. So, so far so good. Um, definitely good so far. Three very power, three very good picks towards Storm deck. Um, as for what our... We have to consider... Yeah. Hmm. There's like, Solar Blast still in red. There, there's not there. There's a death's grasp, which will get picked up by someone. But deep analysis is the card for us. Okay, at this point we have a choice. It's either going to be between um, counterspell or Ophidian. I'm definitely leaning towards the counterspell because it helps with our earlier game. Well. It helps us prevent cards that might just screw us over. Ophidian helps us draw extra cards, but we already have two reasonable card draw effects in our first three picks. So, I think the counter spell is a perfectly fine pick up here. Alright. Nothing really interesting in this. Um, I have the choice between... Killer Whale and Kenai even in blue. Um, I'm going to take the Kenai even because it cycles. The Killer Whale is more of a control finisher. I don't know if I'll be Storm War Control really at this point. Because this is control, 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 and this is the only card towards a Storm deck. But this gives me more versatility towards what I can be later. Okay, I can pick up a Cabal Ritual here. The other option being a Floodplain. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to pick up the Cabal Ritual just to kind of hone in on what I want to play. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Okay, Brainstorm's really nice for us here. It helps me towards my Storm Count. It draws cards. It searches. does everything we want. There's a lot of red, so red is definitely open. Oh, and we get an Obsessive Search, or Dark Grit. Uh, it's definitely, I'm pretty certain it's the Obsessive Search, though, because that combos really well with uh, Frantic Searches when you find those, which hopefully will. Um, Dark Grit's cool, but it's not exactly necessary, whereas Obsessive Search can be a lot better for us. Okay. Nothing really at this point. I can grab a Temporal Fissure just to be on the safe side, make sure I have something that storms. It's a protective card, really. It doesn't really win the games, but it's something. 
Um, from here, I'm going to grab the Ivory Tower over the Paralyze. Paralyze is a good defensive card, but Ivory Tower allows you to A, storm pretty easily. It's colorless. It doesn't really care what mana you're using. And since black is usually your splash in your storm, you want something that's easier to cast for you. Alright, we'll pick up an Addle here. And Mana Prism, which goes over there. So, so far, so good. This is pretty decent from a first pack towards a Storm deck. The only thing I'm missing, obviously, is a Storm Wind Con. Um, but we have two packs to find one. The ideal Wind Con for the Storm deck is Brain Freeze, because Brain Freeze is... it's. I mean, Tendrils works just as well. Don't get me wrong. Tendrils works just as well. But Brain Freeze is the blue one, which is much easier for your deck to use since you generally tend to generate more blue mana than black mana. Alright, and we have this aftershock. Whatever. Um, just in case this was up too loud in the background, we're gonna do that. Okay, um... Armageddon. Ugh. And I say ugh more in the fact that ugh, that would screw us over. <laughs> if, if, we, if that was played against us, it pretty much is the way to say, hey Storm Deck, you know what you're not doing? Playing Storm this game. <laughs> but Deep Analysis is the pick for us here. Gives us the additional card draw that we need, gives us more redundancy towards our deck. Obviously, we're just looking to hit like a brain freeze or something in the next pick or two, just so we can solidify exactly what we're on and just say, done deal, this is what we're going for. Baleful Strix. That's actually pretty decent for us. It draws us a card and only costs two mana, and it's a good blocker. I'm perfectly fine grabbing a Baleful Strix. Aphidian's fine too, Temporal Fissures, eh. But Baleful Strix is good for us. And there's our Brain Freeze. We now have at least one Win Con, which is basically all you really need. Second High Tide just helps throw us over the mana problems. Another Deep Analysis, or an Obsessive Search, or a Scrivener. Now we're getting to the point where we have options. We don't need the side of your tower, we don't need the temporal fissure, we don't need the addle anymore. So now we're up to draw effects galore. We probably don't even need this key even anymore. Um, so I get a choice between the third deep analysis or the second obsessive search. I'm going to take the second obsessive search over the third deep analysis because the obsessive search will work better if we can find frantic searches. Plus, it's a little one mana cantrip effect. Now we're also going to start looking for things like the Nightscape Familiars, who are early blockers. Or well, yeah, early block, early enough blockers, and they make all our spells cost less, which works out really well for us. I mean, those are still kind of secondary towards any. Other good draw effects, like another Factor Fiction, would definitely be picked over a Nightscape Familiar. Um, various things. And we get a second Brain Freeze? Holy crap! We're just going to be kicking... This deck should kick pretty much total ass now. Double Brain Freeze is just ridiculous. I mean, one is good to have, two is just ridiculous. It makes it a lot harder for your opponent to like play around it with factor fiction, say like win con versus everything, and you're just like, ha, got the second win con. Alright, so with this I'm given the choice between Lonely Sandbar, Nightscape Familiar, or Repel, it's the Nightscape Familiar. Um, having drafted Storm enough times before, it's definitely the Nightscape Familiar on that one. It may not always seem like, like the black splash is worth it, but trust me when I say it is definitely worth it in this. 
Um, given the choice between Dark Grit and another Nightscape Familiar, it's definitely the other Nightscape Familiar. Dark Grit is, again, fine, it just produces extra mana, but like with Double High Tide, Nightscape Familiar is just awesome for us. Okay, now we get to pick up another Brainstorm, so we just have Draw Effect, Draw Effect, Mana Effect, Mana Effect, Draw Effect, Draw Effect, Kill Effect, Kill Effect, Counterspell, Mana Effect, Mana Effect, Mana Effect, Draw Effect, Draw, Draw, Draw. So far, it's awesome. Um, take and throw a Temporal Fissure away. Okay, Lonely Sandbar's fine. Cycling Lands is always good. Um, with the... Storm deck, I usually try to run 16 lands instead of anything higher than that. Uh, you usually, depending on how many untap effects you have, um, need like 6 lands to go off. All, it all depends, really. Awesome. Scrivener is great for us here. As is another Lonely Sandbar. This is working out nicely so far. Now in this next uh, pack, we're definitely going to be looking to capitalize on anything that untaps our lands. Pretty much anything that untaps our lands, we definitely want. That means Frantic Searches are an exceptional premium. Turnabout is amazing for us. Cloud of Fairies is good. So, lots of things going on there. Ancient Tomb. I think that's worth like two tickets. It's actually probably good for us. Yeah, actually, I'm probably fine with the Ancient Tomb. Um, the Ancient Tomb is played in, would be played in this deck just because it allows you to ramp faster, which gets you to your draw effects faster, which gets you to winning faster. Everything done faster is done better in the Storm deck. Cloud of Fairies it is. Um, Talion Academy is cute, but doesn't help us. We don't need an Ophidian now. We don't need Rescind. Don't need Skywing Haven. We'll be looking to get this ritual on the return. But Cloud of Fairies definitely works for us. It's an untap effect, and when you have High Tide, it basically means if you've played High Tide, then you play Cloud of Fairies, you just produce two free mana. That's pretty awesome. Interesting. Nothing really fantastic for us here. I guess I could take the expunge because it cycles and is removal. Um, I don't need another lonely sandbar. I'm going to want to have the majority of my lands be islands due to high tide. So we'll take the expunge. Okay, I can grab a third nightscape familiar. That seems fine by me. Um, we are lacking in untap effects, as I was mentioning, but just means you have to be a little more careful with what you're doing. All right, brainstorm's fine. Turnabout, perfect. Turnabout is a phenomenal card for us to hit here. It makes it so that we can basically produce infinite mana. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Another turnabout and or Frantic Search and or Cloud of Fairies would be phenomenal in these next two picks. If not, we'll be looking for thing for other options. Um, Owl Familiar is pretty good for us too. Not quite as good. Kruvikian Sorcerer could be played. But I think I'd just rather have a Dark Grit. At this point, as you can see, our, our black is basically just for mana generation purposes. And, I guess, Baleful Strix. But, um, I probably actually am going to cut the Expunge. It really doesn't do anything for the deck. 
It's not what the deck wants to be doing. The deck doesn't need to kill things. It just needs to kill the player. Alright, given the choice between another Scrivener, or Circular Logic, or Repel, I am favoring a Circular Logic. But, unfortunately we don't have any discard effects. So Circular Logic means, so that means Circular Logic most likely will cost 3 minus probably 1 at any given point. So it probably means it's a 2 mana counterspell. Pretty much the same as playing counterspell, but we'll take it. Okay, now I'll pick up another Scrivener. Just gives more options. Cause... Alright, another Dark Grit. So, as you can see, we've got a very wicked Storm deck going on here. Uh, given the choice between Rescinda and another Lonely Sandbar, I really don't want any more non-basic lands. Maybe one. I'll take a Lonely Sandbar, but we might end up cutting a Lonely Sandbar. Definitely don't need the Putrid Imp. Even though it does give you a discard effect, it's not worth it. So there's going to be some work definitely to be done on this before it's ready, obviously. you got to make cuts, etc, etc. But it doesn't look like we're going to get any more cards that are relevant to us. Stealing a Gilded Light from the person who could be in white right next to us, actually, it could be relevant. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, but who knows. Uh, so right now we're running two counter spells. It's probably fine. Don't really want to go over two counter spells in this because then it takes away from what else you could be doing to get your storm count up. Seven creatures is a little much, but Cloud of Fairies in this case is basically an untap effect and not really a creature. So, since we didn't get any frantic searches, which is the only unfortunate part about this, it's probably worth the effect. Alright, so looking at this, I take out all the lands for right now. I have 25. That means I only need to cut one card from the entire mix. Um, I'm probably just going to cut a Brainstorm. Hmm. The, the likely cuts are either Brainstorm, Counterspell, Circular Logic, Baleful Strix. I'm actually fine with Baleful Strix because it draws a card. So that means our cuts are either Circular Logic, Counterspell, Brainstorm. I might also add a Dark Grit to that. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to keep the Dark Grit, so. And the Brainstorms. Which means it's either counterspell or circular logic. Circular logic's not a instant counter or not a well let's see. Circular logic gets its cost reduced by Nightscape Familiar. Counterspell does not because it's just straight double blue. Circular logic is not a guaranteed counterspell. Counterspell is a guaranteed counterspell. I'm gonna cut the circular logic. So this gives us twenty-four. Now we're going to be looking to go with all the Lonely Sandbars and the Ancient Tomb. Gives us 28. Then it's looking like we do 8 and 4. Um, I'm actually going to do 9 and 4 and cut one of these Lonely Sandbars. So, sorting this, I have no 3 drops in the deck, which is unfortunate, because 3 drops are where your Frantic Searches should be. Without Frantic Searches, though, this is probably fine. Um, the entire goal is basically to go high tide into turnabout into untap combo. So, you gotta draw enough cards to find those pieces and just go off. We'll see how it works.